Awesome. The first question that uh, the and I have seen this question a lot uh, by many of our viewers. So, can you become a data scientist if you aren't good at maths or programming? So, can I think uh, I probably think this question is also asked in your channel. So, you can yeah. ask. Uh, you can actually answer this. Well, you know, I, I think that uh, again, this is asked all the time of me, and it's one of the questions that for me it's a little bit frustrating because. I think that you need to be good at math and programming to become a data scientist. But just because you're not good at math or programming right now doesn't mean that you can't become good at either one of those fields or both. And so I think that the biggest challenge is saying, you know, is developing in people a growth mindset to say that, hey, you know, I know that I need these skills going forward to, to, to tackle this field, but how do I go about and, and learn them? How do I go about and build them even if I'm not great now? Because, you know, these concepts, they're, they can be difficult, they can be challenging, but I firmly believe that almost anyone can learn either of those disciplines enough to be effective as a data analyst or even a data scientist. So, you know, it is less about, hey, you're not good at it, but you're not good at it yet. Uh, and that is the key component there in my mind is that, you know, how do we convince people or how, how do you, um, you know, change your, your, your mindset so that you can develop these skills over time. So the answer, short answer is yes. I, I do think um, that you can become good, uh, become a data scientist if you aren't good at these skills now. But if you personally believe that you'll, you'll never be good at these skills, you won't be able to become a data scientist. So we can go to Chanin. Uh... Yeah, so I, I agree with Ken and uh, previously, uh, I, I also received this question quite often, and so I uh, I have hand drawn an infographic called the data science landscape, where I summarize the eight skill sets of a data scientist. And math and programming is among two of the eight skill sets, and there are six other. So if you're not good in programming or math yet at the uh, present moment, it doesn't mean that you cannot become a data scientist. As Ken has mentioned, yes, I agree that if you have a growth mindset and you see yourself in the future that you are aiming toward becoming a data scientist, so make a plan, jot it down, make a note of what you need to read and learn about. And I mean, over the course of one year or two years, I mean, if you learn something new every day, every week, then I, I believe that you can become a data scientist. Um, at the moment, you might be lacking math or programming, but still you might have other um, strong component. Like you might be very good in writing. You might be very good in communication. You might have uh, pretty strong domain knowledge or, or you could be very good in statistics. So, so the strengths that you have, the unique strengths that you have would far outweigh the uh, programming or the math uh, ability that you have at the moment. So I believe anyone can learn. And I, I, I've even made a video uh, as a non-technical background. I'm a biologist. So I have zero background in programming. So actually my, my learning journey was pretty much uh, very painful at first. So programming, I mean, trying to learn what is an array, what is a variable, I mean, for the first time. And so over time, it slowly came to me, it slowly clicked. So, yeah, so like, like Ken said, I mean, if you have a growth mindset, then, I mean, anything goes. I mean, just set your mind to it and just do it. Don't overthink it, just do it. So, thank you. Awesome points from Ken and Chanin. Now, Dhawal, uh, you can also add some points if you have any. Yeah, sure. Uh, I would repeat the same thing that Kenji mentioned that if you think that you're not good in math, is it because you're really not good or is it because you did not have a right mentorship during college or school days? Um, I was kind of average in math and statistics, but I found then uh, two great resources to learn uh, mathematics. One was the three blue, one brown ch YouTube channel. And the other one is mathisfun.com. So if you don't know, for example, what is vector and how to add two vectors uh, on math.fun.com, uh, they give a very simple analogy that let's say plane is flying and there is a wind and wind and plane both have a velocity as well as the direction. And if you want to add those two vectors, what you get is the end of direction of the plane. So that's how you explain vector. If you want to explain what is matrix, then you just say have a couple of, let's say products, you know, and then each product have their yearly sales number and then your individual unit items. And if you do the math, what you get is actually matrix multiplication. So sometimes, 
you think that you don't know the concept but really you know it and it's not that hard it's just that you did not have right mentorship and resources so we need to be very very open and as can mention just uh, uh, have a learning and growth mindset try to look for right resources where you can sharpen those skills and maybe you will figure out that you are not good that bad at math oh thank you uh, dhawan uh, i think i agree with all of you guys uh, i just like to add one point now many people will be learning maths from the school days right uh, so what i consider is that understanding the concept with a particular use case is pretty much important uh, for a data science data scientist so some people may find maths very difficult because that is the reason the reason is that they are not able to relate with a real world use case like how dhawan said gave the example of plane wind right when they are able to visualize in that particular way a real world object is placed in front of them so definitely they will be able to learn those things i was also an average student in kind of maths uh, when i was in my high school and my college days you know 11th and 12th but as i entered into the data science industry i was able to relate those things you know if i take an example of differential equations uh, white is used slopes right now when i am learning about deep learning techniques or machine learning algorithm in such as in linear regression where i have actually learned about gradient descent now i am able to relate those so what i feel is that yes uh, people they may find it uh, you know math difficult but if they try to study or try to focus with respect to real world scenario i think they will be able to cover it much more quickly with respect to programming i think uh, if you are good at some particular concepts how to implement it you need to practice with respect to that but trust me if you are able to understand something implementation will be definitely be easy based on the lot of resources that are actually present so this was my point if you want to add anything otherwise i'll be going to the next question i hope you agree with this points anyone who wants to answer yep absolutely yeah yeah oh, i i agree 100% i would i'd love to add one thing i think that you know learning programming and learning math are are complementary in in a lot of sense so you know if you can understand the how one of the data science algorithms work uh, at a programming level right you you functionally understand it enough that like you should be able to understand the theory behind it because you have to apply it with the uh, you know you have to write it in code and so a lot of people think of, of those as two different things but you know in a sense they're the same thing and if you understand one you have such a further uh, a better chance of understanding the other and so you know sometimes people are really focused on like oh i have to learn these both at, at um you know at different times or whatever it might be you can tie that knowledge together you know it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, one or the other or one at a time so you know to your point i think that um you do benefit from just being able to 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 understand these things from a programming level and um sometimes the math can come after cool uh, can so i we'll go to the one? next yeah 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 yes yeah. yeah so so uh, uh i mean the the idea is suggested by ken and and deval so i it came to me that there there is a lot of this i mean if if you get started right if we just get started uh if we don't overthink it just get started with learning data science and let's say that okay you're trying to implement uh random forest and then there's this concept of bagging and then and then you have to you have to learn about bagging right you have to learn about um the number of trees that it will be generating so what you could do is do the just in time learning so you learn just enough in order to use it and so if you do this do this bit by bit it wouldn't be a big burden so i mean and then the next project you might be wanting to learn about neural network and then you you will learn about okay what is neurons how they connect it so you learn slowly slowly so i mean if if you implement the just in time learning so it doesn't have to be a big burden and yeah it's yeah, reachable challenge i call i call basically it as a reverse engineering you know pick up a project oh, okay, yeah. that learn all the things that are you know like go to the core and learn all the branches that are involved for that use case so amazing thing yes yeah. yeah, we it's funny we all have different i call this a minimum viable knowledge you know like minimum oh. viable product for for um, yeah. startups like you just enough to be able to get your hands dirty and then you can keep learning as you go so right. i think it's really yeah fun. we we use different terms i call it like targeted learning or project based learning but the concept is all same now one point i want to add uh, chenin is one frustration that people face uh, with this approach is that let's say i'm working on image classification project and i need to learn now about wavelet transform and fourier series and 
I don't know anything about it. I don't know even what is like time and frequency domain. So I'm working on this project, making a slow progress. Now I'm kind of making a fork out of it to go into steps world and learning all these concepts. Then I have to come back so that I can make a progress in my project further. One problem that people face is when you go in this world, you kind of can get stuck in a get black lost. hole and you yeah. never come out. Uh, but people have to keep this in mind that they have to keep a balance that they don't get stuck. At the same time, they need to appreciate the fact that it's okay to spend two weeks in this area, right? Don't think that I have not made any progress in my project for two weeks. It's totally fine. Your progress makes slow progress. It is okay because you are now learning a lot of new things which will be useful in doing other projects in the future. So we have to be mindful about that fact, don't get frustrated, you know, have a lot of patience. At the same time, don't, don't get stuck in a black hole. Right. Thank you.